Hi guys, welcome back to Trip to Horror Road. Yes, it's just me today. I've got no guests as I, as I always will want to do, but um, this is a standalone review. As I revealed in the last one, I revealed the title of the next video I'm going to be doing, and that is The Exorcist 3. We should get a better look from there and here. Um, yeah, that's the review for the day. Um, I was going to do Signs of Lambs, but I'm going to switch some episodes around for the titles. Because the next one, what I want to do is Dream Demon. Right. Partner. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. I don't know even know why I said that, but... So, yeah. Let's get into the review. Oh, Trip to Horror Road, episode 21. The Exorcist 3. Bring it on, partner. Right, as I said, uh, I'm going to be reviewing The Exodus 3. What is The Exodus 3 about? The Exodus 3 has, uh, has a detective from the original called, uh, I think it's George C. Scott, as Lieutenant Kinderman. He finds out there's uh, mysterious murders that's been going, ar going around in the city. This, the same city that the uh, the Exodus was in. And it's been rumoured that the uh, Gemini killer has returned and saying it's all connected all at once. And it's all connected, actually which I'm going to say is a couple of priests being getting killed. It's up to Lieutenant Kinderman to solve the mystery and find out who is Patient X, which you will find out later on into the film. Um, what is my opinions on the movie at first? Um, before I went in, I've had low expectations. I thought it was just going to be another shitty ass sequel that you're going to see from The Exorcist 2 Heretic. Which I absolutely fucking hated, and I turned it off halfway through. But this one was a bit different. Like I went in, as I said, with low expectations, and when I what I thought was did a fucking hell of a good job in the fucking second one. Um, yeah, I like the way I liked it about it. It was mostly like a detective story, like you know, trying to solve the puzzles. Like it was it this guy or this guy, but mentioned the Gemini killer, which is based on the Zodiac killer, and. So gotta try to find out who is committing these murders. I just continue like in a mental institution, but I'll talk about a bit about that later and about the scenes that I love in the film. But yeah, the storytelling was br I, like, absolutely brilliant as well. Like you can see that the uh, the writer William Peter Blatty, who also directed the film, he brought a new taste to the, what the Exorcist should have been. Like, but. This was a totally different kind of film. Uh, it's supposed to be like a detective psychological thriller. Like, is the detective seeing things or is it actually the paranormal? And and how it's all based out, like how it started bringing back the old location of the original Exorcist, seeing those famous stairs, but you don't see the house, which is a really good thing. Because the house doesn't matter, because that's where Regan O'Neill lived, which she moved away. And... Um, and you see the famous stairs where you see the the priest uh, falling out with the famous scene from the window, and that that's when and having a like a flashback to one, to the priest. Um, I don't know what his name was, but he, he absolutely loves uh, movies and being in the uh, the church as well. And that was a really good note, like you know remembering that old music. You know, well, it brings like a new feeling, like deep. I'd rather have a detective horror story because it builds up the tension and it reveals new tear tales of what the exorcist was. What is Pazuzu? I don't know. Like, I don't want to tell you because I want you to find out yourself. And and I want, also want to find let you find out who is the Gemini killer and who is Patient E, which you will find out in the movie whenever you see it. Um, the characters. Uh, Josie Scott like, comes back as... Lieutenant Kinnaman from the original, who uh, goes around to interview, uh, you know, Regan, 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 whatever the name is. But his character was so, like, put on. He knew, like, what he was going to get into. Like, the way he was, like, feeling, seeing these, like, psychological images in his dreams. Like, even seeing it when he's meeting Patient X. Like, is it... Damon Karras, or is it the Gemini Killer? That's what he's trying. The demon was trying to mess on with his mind, but that's what the thing is. It felt so real, 
that it could have just been you thinking of it. Like, that demon from the first one could have just been psychological. It could have not happened, you know? Like, it could be, like, the daughter's imagination that passed on to the actual priestess itself. But you don't know that because that's what the film tells you when you when you get into this film. And that's what's great. And it brings loads of different theories. Like, what happened to the priest? Like, is he alive? Is he dead? We do not know. That's what brings it. Um, I'm also going to say Brad, Brad Dourif, like, in this uh, film. Like, he's... Well, Brad Dourif is actually amazing in anything but horror related. And he plays the serial killer in the movie. But um, it brings, like, a new feeling of horror, you know? He's, like, saying that he is the person who is the Gemini killer. But even though, when you find out, the Gemini killer is died in an electric chair. But is it just Lieutenant Kinderman's, um, you know, mind? Like, Brad Dourif, his performance in The Exorcist 3 brings a whole different level, you know? Is he the one who's committing the murders? Or is it the detective himself due to the trauma that will happen to Damien Karras? And that brings a new vibe to the movie. And the way it builds up, like, you know, going back to old locations and going back to visit Patient X to find out more information if this detective thinks Damien Karras is still alive. But what he sees is a serial pathic killer going around killing people but is it him is it mind control is it everything like yeah it could be anything that's all that's all i can see because I, I don't want to get in the spoiler territory because like if i'm having a discussion probably when i do a revisit of this film which will go into spoiler territory like when i got one of my guests I've actually seen the film it brings a new vibe that's what it does it brings a new vibe to the mo to modern 90s horror and that's what that's what was great and what William Peter Blatty did is that he needed something new to bring to the franchise. Like, I found out that the night configuration, I think, is actually part of the Exorcist franchise. But it had nothing to do with the Exorcist. But how is that man supposed to know that? Because I haven't seen the night configuration. But it looks interesting, which I will probably watch. Because Peter, William Peter Blatty, like, he only directed two films in his life. But he's mostly written, like, screenplays. Like, he wrote the screenplay for The X, which is really interesting. And it brings that new vibe of horror. A detective psychological thriller to bring a new version to this story. Um, I have not watched the um, the Legion's director's cut, but I am going to tell you it looks interesting. Like, I, had a, I put it on, like, in the disc tray, and it has old VHS footage that was missing. Cause it can't, cause it's like not what well, it wasn't really recorded on film, so it would have been, cause it was on tape. So that's how it was brought brand new from the director's real perspective. Um, I wouldn't really call this the Exorcist Three, cause and though it does relate, but I would rather this would call Legion, the, the story from confusing itself with the Exorcist, cause there is an exorcism in the film, but I think. It's not huge because there's not that many priests in there. Because, like, it's mostly about the detective. Mostly trying to solve the mystery of these murders. Of the priests getting murdered. So, that's what it's give you. And that's all I can say for that about this review. And with that artwork right there, it's actually amazing. You know, if I can get a better picture of the disc. But due to it's been a night time, I might not be able to do it. But if you saw it, leave a comment down below. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to give for that, mo for that movie. It's just a really good detective story. And that is what is brilliant about it. So, yeah. So, that's my review for The Exorcist 3. Um, yeah. So, this episode, Dream Demon. And then we are going into Science of the Lambs territory. Or 13 Ghosts, depending what film I watch. So, yes. And I will be having some, like, discussions in the live stream to see what other films that you suggest that I should review for the uh, series. I'm hoping to continue to till we arrive at our destination. Because once we get up to episode 50, we are going on a new journey. Well, not really a new journey. We are actually beginning the road itself. 
going to be calling it Welcome to Horror Road from that from after that. Then the journey home, which could be the third season. So this is Horror Road. It's the first season. Once I get the 50 episodes, and um, there's going to be a two week break, and then I'm going to be bringing some interesting horror films to you. So keep an eye out. We might have some old favorites. We might go deep into Halloween. We might visit Psycho. Or even the Evil Dead films, as I've got from up here, I might visit Friday the 13th. You don't know. I might be in Horror... Ooh, pardon me. I might not be in Horror Road. I might be welcome to Horror Road. So be there. Because I'm Ryan of Let's Get Kicking Movies, and I'll see you next time. Bye.